let's shift our focus now to cricket. Despite a year characterised by the West Indies failing to qualify for the 50 over World Cup, one Caribbean country is celebrating their 2023 achievements. The Guyana Cricket Board is acknowledging a record number of selections at the highest level in both senior and junior cricket. At least two Guyanese players were selected to every West Indies assignment in 2023 with five representing West Indies A on their tour of South Africa in November and six on the women's A-team tour of Pakistan in October. There was also a lot to celebrate in the Caribbean Premier League as 11 players were selected to represent two franchises during the tournament that saw the Ghana Amazon Warriors end a decade-long title drought. Now joining us to reflect on the past year is operations manager of the Ghana Cricket Board, Anthony Dianrad. Uh, Anthony, welcome to the Sportsmax Zone. It's great to have you on. Um, a lot going right for Guyanese cricket at the moment. Um, what's the reason for that? Yeah, thank you. Good evening uh, to all of you. Um, well, 2023, as, as you mentioned, um, was a record year for us, especially at the, the West Indies level, where we had representatives at all levels, both male and female, and recently, Two players have been named on the West Indies on a 19 squad, which will be heading to South Africa in another few days for the Youth World Cup. And, and we, 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 we talk about Red Bull cricket, Anthony, uh, that it really is the basis, basis of developing good technical cricketers. And uh, I, I note that the Ghanaians have won six of the last eight completed seasons in the four-day regional competition. Uh, that has to be something that your board is very proud about. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, red ball cricket, as we know, um, leads to test cricket and is very, is very high on the agenda in the West Indies, as well as, well as around the world. Um, we focus a lot on, on red ball cricket and we, we prioritize the red ball cricket because obviously the, the goal for every cricketer should be to represent West Indies and to play test cricket. Yeah, can you talk to us quickly about the, the infrastructure of uh, Guyana's cricket, especially your youth program? Because, um, you know, for decades, Guyana have been very strong in under 15, under 17, which is a recent, you know, inclusion in the West Indies program, and also under 19 cricket. So can you just briefly talk about the grassroots um, infrastructure that is in place in in Ghana to develop these cricketers? Okay, so what we've had in the past was the the, the customary on the 15, on the 17, on the 19 age group cricket. But recently, um, just two years ago, I think it was December 2022, the GCB, uh, in collaboration with the Trinidad and Tobago Cricket Board, initiated an on a 13 level um, cricket. So we've had two it's just um, bilateral series, which is between the Guyana and the Guyana on the 13 and the Trinidad on the 13 team. The first one, the annual one, was in December 2022. Trinidad won that series here in Guyana. And back in August last year, we, we won a return visit to one. In addition to that, um, last August, in partnership with Republic Bank, who was the, the sponsor, we implemented a, an under 13, sorry, an under 23 uh, into club competition. So we now have the under, tw under 13 competition, which is also played at the inter-county level. And we've had the implementation of the under 23 age group um, cricket as well. This year, um, we, we, we're looking to also have the inter-county under 23 tournament as part of our cr cricket um, activities for the calendar year. Yeah, it seems like a really, really packed season, I have to ask, on behalf of the females. How important and how much precedence does the GCB put on women's cricket? Because I saw some really interesting developments coming on the women's side. So talk to me about that. Well, this administration, um, back in 2021, when they came in and um, took charge, wanted to focus a lot on women's cricket and not leave them behind. So what we did is we, we appointed a head coach for the women's cricket, as well as an assistant coach. And we, we now have female training programs across Guyana. 
So it's not just the males training um, on a regular basis. We have organized female training sessions happening year round. How much do you think that has benefited the ladies? And did you notice if more youngsters, young girls are becoming interested in playing cricket for their country? Yes, definitely. We've had a, a lot more interest um, when it comes to the under-19 cricket. When we had the trials, we had over 40 persons um, or females turning out to, to that trial um, last year. Also, if you, you notice from the, the female aspect of the CPL, we had quite a few more um, uh, Guyanese players participating in the last female CPL or women's CPL. Yeah definitely noticed that and of course you know we want to encourage you and the GCB to continue the good work where women's cricket is concerned you mentioned the CPL and wow Guyana finally got that off their back able to walk away with the CPL title you're smiling and I understand because whenever we spoke on this show we always spoke about Ghana being one of the top challengers for the CPL I remember that season you all went undefeated throughout the entire season and lost the most important match the final so that was 2015 so how good does it feel to finally get that off your back well, I think I can speak for our Guyanese when I say we are very, very proud. They say, as the saying goes, um, good things come to those who wait. And I think we've waited quite a long time, the 10th edition, to be able to win that first title, that elusive title. So I think we, we, we still celebrate it. I think there are Guyanese across Guyana that still celebrate that, that title and remember whenever we remember it. Yeah, and well, you know, well deserved. If I was you, I would celebrate until the next CPL to ensure that the fans did not forget, of course, you know, what you had to do to get to this point. What I also find commendable is, you know, CPL is franchise cricket, and of course, it's a mix of different players from different countries. But this uh, Ghana Amazon Warriors team consisted of nine players who belonged to Ghana. And again, that speaks to the work and the volume of work that you and your team have been doing when it comes to the development of cricket in Guyana. Yes, definitely. And I think with the, with the inclusion of all those Guyanese would, is, a, is a testimony to the talent we have here in Guyana and the work we've been putting in for the past few years. When you think about the future, because it's the beginning of a new year and, you know, most bodies, most organizations, they sit down, they plan ahead, they have goals. What is your organization looking forward to short term, of course? Well, for this year, obviously, we're looking forward to winning all regional tournaments, both male and female, as well as the, the youth cricket. Uh, we want to be able to implement the under 23 at the inter-county level, so that's for local cricket, um, the under 23, we want to have it at the local level, um, the inter-county level, and hopefully sometime in the near future, West Indies could, could adopt our vision and have the under 23 being implemented at the regional level as well. Also, we, we're in the process of adding a, 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 an, an analyst um, full-time to the Guyana Harp Eagles setup. Recently, with the, with the help of the CWI, we've all franchises have added the um, strength and conditioning coach. And that was last year. So that is a step in the right direction when it comes to, or if you're talking about having a professional system or a professional setup. So we would want to have a full-time analyst because we've never had that at the GCB level. Yeah. It's always yeah. been a part-time um, deal for us at and, and it's only done at the regional level whenever we have regional competitions so we want to have that full-time analyst to be able to work with the team day in day out just like the strength and conditioning coach just like the physiotherapist just like the head coach be able to have that access to that type of technology and that type of training yeah. also in the, yeah. the, the we recently renamed the Territorial Development um, Department to the Cricket Operations Department. A part of that department is is going to we're going to add a database where we want to have information or data on our local cricketers. 
Yes. So it's not when they get to the, it's not when they, only when they get to the, the NRP Eagles level or the senior level that they will have information or the coaches would have information on the players. Right. You want to be able to have that information from the junior level as low as on the third team. So that is something we are working very diligently on, on, on trying to implement in our plans. Okay, so Anthony, I can see that, you know, your team has already met and they have plans in place. We're going to take a quick break, so I don't want you to go anywhere because when we come back, we'll continue to pick up the discussion. So stay right there, viewers. We're just taking a quick break. We're talking to the operations manager at the Guyana Cricket Board, Anthony DeAndrade. Let's take a quick break. We're coming right back. <laughs> 